How's everyone doing out there? It's Coach Hemi. Long time since I put a vlog up. It's been maybe about a week or two. A lot has happened since then. Uh, as the JV head coach at Thomas Worthington, got my first dub, so I'm really excited about that. You know, round of applause. <laughs> we are one in four. Uh, this has been a very trying year with COVID and you know having players miss a, miss a few weeks or having players just because of parents, you know, with precautions, sit out. Players not, you know, the inkling of someone not feeling, well, hey, stay home, get healthy, do what you need to do. So it's, you know, been kind of up and down for the JV program this year. Um, but I will say, we're just as good as your last game, last game with the dub. So we're definitely headed in the right direction. Last few practices, I've been kind of gearing towards or leaning more towards skill development. Early on in the year, because of the limited summer we had due to COVID, we were unable to get into the gym. And as coaches, we like to be more hands-on. You know, you wish you play every player works as hard as I do as far as putting in effort as they are as implementing it as far as the practice goes. So with the limited summer and having girls at the sports and some girls, you know, they just kind of, at the JV level, they're not really into all the training aspect of it. You know, we try the best to do that in summer workouts. But now we got to do that. Say so again, it's been tough. So the first half of the year, we were uncertain if we don't have a year. So it became a lot of, hey, let's try and implement, you know, at least have a skeleton offense, something we could run. Let's work on defensive side of the ball, you know, being able to play man to man, some of our zones. So I was kind of leaning more towards the basketball part versus the skill part. And that's something I, as a coach, the last few weeks have changed. Uh, we had a week and a half off, JV team, no game. So every practice we have at least 30 to 45 minutes of us just skill development, whether it be dribbling, working on shot mechanics, footwork, those three things mainly. And with certain players, I'm not gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you here, I'm not gonna lie. You notice your players at the JV level who are potential kind of varsity players, but you know, there's 10 varsity girls in, the, in that gym. So they're like, okay, coach likes them at the varsity games to dress or watch, but they're just not there mentally with the development. They have, might have some physical tools, but varsity basketball at the division one high school level, sometimes a lot of it, well, majority of it's mental. You can have the body mechanics or skill, but if you don't have the ment mentality to go out there and want to implement those things, it's tough. So that's where I come in as JV coach, trying to instill that confidence in them, but also, hey, you have these tools, I'm gonna teach you how to fine tune them and how to use them in certain situations. So I try and split the girls up with, our, with my assistant coach, she works mainly with some of the mid-level players, and I work with kind of those starters, you know, players who get a lot of minutes and just kind of fine-tuning their court awareness. Because one of the huge things I look for as a JV coach, mind you, I'm not the varsity level, but I aspire to be into that next level, is court awareness, defensively and offensively. Those players who, on the offensive end, see things before they happen. Now, a lot of that sometimes isn't taught. It's just you have the innate ability to see those things, but I've also learned in my career, they can be worked on and honed in a way where it becomes like second nature. So that's kind of the first thing I work on my guards is being able to, you know, get to that next level out off a of screen, catching the ball off passes and just kind of seeing what the defense does or making the defense shift to see the next play offensively. That's something that the last few weeks we kind of take a good 20 minutes. Mind you, there's never enough time in practice. There's never enough time in practice. <laughs> but with us not having any games, I said, hey, let's not so much worry about working on the plays right now. Let's make you guys better basketball players because at this level, a lot of my coaches know, sometimes you just need to know how to play basketball. Every play, as much as you wanted to, will not work. Every situation, as much as you wanted to, will not be what you taught in practice. So I teach my players hey, the defense won't know what we're doing, but as long as we can adjust and refire, we'll be fine. You know, they love to ask that question. Well, what happens if this happens? Or what do I do if this happens? Hey, if you know how to play basketball and read defenses as an offensive player, then it's just come down to, okay, if I'm supposed to go set a back screen or set a down screen and my player forgets what to do, what do I do? 
well, if I'm open, I'm going to show myself and look to score, or I'm going to, whatever the case may be in that particular situation. You know, you got to kind of, I'm trying to help them with those things. It's tough, but that's my, that's kind of like my thing as a, as a coach. So trying to get the, the last bit of juice out of that orange, you know. And then on the defensive side of the ball, we work on a lot of man-to-man. I, I don't want to say I don't believe in zone. At the high school level, I'm not a fan of it. I understand why coaches do it. I understand why coaches teach it. There are some benefits to knowing as a player how to play zone. But I fully believe in you got to guard straight up. There are ter- certain teams where that's your personnel. I'm never going to be upset. Hey, if I had the personnel where we couldn't guard man to man, but I can't say that because I know we're going to be able to. We not be, might not be the best at it, but we're going to do man to man defense. Like, <laughs> and we work shell drill between ten to fifteen minutes every day. The principles, the rotations, uh, you know, hedging the cutters. Making sure you don't let people cut across your face. Just anything you think of, you know, which which direction we want them going. If they're top of the, of the catch the ball, top of the elbow, or catch the ball on the wing, where our bodies should be facing all, you know, as help, and what should we be looking at as a help defender, and just you know being communicative as a help defender, just being mobile, being active on defense. That's a big thing a lot of players don't understand. Being active on defense as an off ball defender, it's very important. Uh, you know, and as an on-ball defender, what do you want to look for? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? You know, what are some things that you want to happen from your team behind you? You know, sometimes we don't, as a coach, you don't realize, hey, if I'm on the ball in a game and I'm not the best on-ball defender, I need to know what's going on behind me. I, you know, and as a coach, you're trying to teach those things. Hey, it's okay to get on your teammates about what you need as a, as a team, as a, as a teammate, as a player. You know, I'm real big at that. If I'm gonna if I'm on the defensive side of the ball and we give up a, a a score, and it was either on me or not on me. He's like, hey, you gotta let me know that person's flashing. Hey, you gotta let me know, you know. And I'm trying to instill that confidence in my team. I have made some strides. Some days they're a lot bigger than others. My coaches, you guys understand that. You guys know that. But it's just you know, every day we want to get one percent better. Every day I want a player to come on and say, hey, I learned something new. I didn't know I could do that. That was new for me. Or, hey, coach, good practice. Practice was great today. I got a lot out of it. Sometimes it's just them sitting on the sideline putting shoes on. Like, man, I'm tired. Yeah. As a coach, I want you to be worn out. Not to where you're, you're dead tired, but at least where it's like, hey, I got better today. That's my goal as a coach. Is at this level where I'm at, the JV level, is to make sure players get better and have that confidence. Because someday I want them to say, hey, I was with Coach Hemi and JV last year. And he was a great coach, but I'm glad I'm not with him this year. That means I stepped up. You know, I tell every one of my freshmen and sophomores who have that ability, you don't want to see me two years in a row, you know. <laughs> you definitely don't want to see me three years in a row, especially if you're a freshman. I got you as a freshman. I got you as a sophomore. And, you know, I sometimes have these qualms about that. Is it my fault that they weren't able to progress? Is it my fault that I didn't put them in the proper positions to you know, to have success. But on the other side of the coin, it's, hey, I give you the tools. You know, I'm going to show you all day, every day how to get better. I'm going to send you the, the workout links on YouTube. I'm going a, I'm to a send you some workouts, I, I, you know, that I used to do as a player. I'm going to talk to coaches about things I can do better to help my team. And I do all those things for you. After practice, we stay in shoot. We stay in dribble. You know, in the summer, hey, you want to, you know, I train players as well. So in the summer, my players who I don't coach AAU or who, are able to kind of get those days where they don't have practice AAU wise and work out. Hey, we're working out. We're doing things. I'm sending you stuff and they're working hard. Am I not doing everything I need to do? So that's something I kind of battle with myself, but I'm getting better with understanding if I'm putting the work in and they're doing just as much work as I am, they'll be fine. And, you know, in our, on our team this year, I have four players, three of who I coach as freshmen on the JV team, one who I coach as an eighth grader in AAU who all play varsity now. So, You know, we're working on trying to get them into college. We're working on trying to make them better basketball players. And that's kind of like been my goal the last three years at Thomas is just what am I doing to best support and to promote growth basketball wise and, you know, everyday school life as a young adult. And also in that confidence, am I instilling confidence in them? 
I don't want to ever be that player or that coach who 10 years from now, I got a player, yeah, coach, like, practice was brutal, man. Like, we didn't feel like we were good. You know, we didn't feel like you believed in us. I never want that to happen. You know, I always want players, win or loss. Coaches ride with us to the end. We was down 20, but he he kind of got into us, but he didn't he didn't think we was going to lose. You know, or we up 15, we're up, we're up two. Coach knows we're going to pull this out. It ain't. It's not a question of, is he going to, man, does he doubt us? Does he think we're going to lose it? No. Hey, I trust you can do it, so go do it. And if you don't, it's fine because we know you can. Just now what we have to do to where it becomes habit. It becomes something that you don't have to think of. It becomes just reaction. You know, that's something I, one of my, one of my better players at JU level, she's a really good ball handler, decent scorer. I'm trying to get her to where it, not everything is so reactionary as far as, maybe not that word. It's not as, it's not, I'm sorry, not reactionary. It's not so thought out. It's just, it's, it is reactionary. It's not to where, you know, she, she dribbles a lot. I, I call it dancing. I hate when she dances. It has to be a thing where it's a one, two dribble, go to the basket, one, two dribble, you attack to get a player open versus you just probing for yourself. Everything needs to be something where it's not a thought out motion. It's fluid. You know, some of the best basketball players, it's all about creativity, but things just happen. You know, when they go to the basket, seeing that second level, getting past that first defender, you, you just react. It's not a thought out. Cause when you're thinking you're not playing and when you're not playing, you're losing, you know? So that's, that's kind of my philosophy. I don't know how you guys feel about it. We can definitely talk about it in the comments, subscribe, like it. Let me know what you think. If you totally disagree with me, let me know. I would love to talk about it, have a discussion about it, see your point of view, whatever the case may be. But as long as we're helping each other get better in this coaching world, I can't complain. You know, so thank you guys for joining me. It's been a short video. I'm going to definitely try and make sure I'm staying on my vlogs, man, letting you guys know how we are doing at Thomas Weddington because we have a long, it's been a long season, but it's, you know, short game wise. So varsity game today, got a JV big JV game Saturday and Sunday. So wish us luck. Wish you guys all the luck out there and you guys' coaching career and also this coaching COVID season. So just stay up it, stay up with it. And this has been Coach Hemi. See you guys later. Oh, also before I forget, check out my podcast. Give me a full podcast with Coach Hemi. We're only two episodes in. Have some great conversations with my coaches at Thomas, and we're going to be doing an interview series where I'm going to be talking to coaches from around the area, around the state, and potentially, you know, want to interview coaches from around the country. So if you're interested in talking to me about your style, you know, your culture, your just beliefs and when it comes to basketball, I'm definitely open to talking to you. So check it out. Check, uh, it's on Spotify, Apple, Google, and wherever else you can podcast. All right. See you guys later.